I've switched camera systems again. What am I doing? Right guys, welcome back. Or maybe not, welcome back. I don't know, it's been so long. Anyway, I hope you're all good. So as you can probably gather from this title of this video, I've switched camera systems. So I switch, like, don't do what I do. Just don't, it's not, it's not financially viable. It's not wise. Definitely pick a system, test them out. Go out there and test your mate's cameras. Go to a shop, test those cameras. But don't do what I do, which is read all the specs, watch all the YouTube videos, ironically, you're watching this one, and then go, yeah. I'm gonna get the Sony, yeah, I'm gonna get the Lumix, yeah, I'm gonna get the Canon. Then you get it, and then you're not quite happy with it, so you switch. Don't do it, don't do it. Words of wisdom. So, why, you ask? And I guess what to? I'll start off by saying I was a Sony user. Shooting on the Sony A7S III currently, because I've still got it, it's not past hands yet. And as you can tell from my other videos, you've seen me talk about the Sigma 24-70, to you've heard me talk about the 20mm Sony lens, all great lenses. I definitely still stand by those videos. But anyway, what have I moved to? Well, oh. yep, Lumix, the S52X. Oh, and I love it. Absolutely love it. Such a sexy, sexy camera. So why, you ask? Why would you move from the Sony A7S III to the Lumix S52X when arguably the S3 is a better camera? I mean, 120 frames per second in 4K, no crop. It's just, I mean, it's a phenomenal camera. It still holds up as being one of the best sort of hybrid mirrorless cameras out there that money can buy. So why, why, why would I go through the rigmarole of switching? Selling my lenses, selling my camera, making a loss, and buying the Lumix. I think, I think, I need to start from the beginning. So, 2009, I go travelling. I buy my first, what I would consider, manual camera. We're not talking a professional DSLR, we're talking just a camera that allows for manual settings, so you can control the exposure, you can control the image. So I had the Canon G10 PowerShot pocket camera. It wasn't long until I needed to upgrade into some form of DSLR. I got the Canon 500D, along with, what was it now? It was an 18 to 200 Tamron lens. Like it was a budget zoom lens, but it, at the time it just covered an entire range and it allowed me to experiment and sort of try new things. But I quickly outgrew that camera. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I think it's the, it's the start of the gas. You know what I mean? Gear acquisition syndrome. That's where it all began for me. So I sold my 500D with that. I actually made money, believe it or not. I don't know how. And I got the Canon 7D, but with the Nifty 50. Again, loved it. Got to practice even further with things like depth of field, low light, all these things. Then I got the 24 to 105 L lens. That became my all purpose lens. Never came off the camera, if I'm honest. And I probably didn't really go back to the Nifty 50 if I really think about it. Had that for quite a while. And then obviously I wanted to start making money from this because, you know, it became a passion. But then I was like, well, why can't my passion become my career? So I started investing in other things such as lighting. I got myself a macro lens and started doing some macro photography. So I absolutely loved the Canon and it was built like a tank. Honestly, you could go through a tornado with it and it would still come out the other end. Fantastic camera. Obviously the 7D is a crop sensor camera, so I wanted to go full for it because it really bugged me having the 24 to 105, but not being able to use it to its full potential because of the 1.5 times crop or 1.6 times crop, I think it's in Canon. And at the time you would naturally go to the 5D Mark II. And I think the 5D Mark III was also being announced around that time as well. Oh, I almost forgot. I also started experimenting with video for the first time with the 7D because it actually shot pretty good video to be fair. So I wanted a camera not only to be full frame but then I wanted a camera that would be great with video so again the 5D Mark II at that time was groundbreaking with its video however the A6500 was released and I know it's not full frame it's crop sensor still but it was affordable it was cheap it was lightweight and it had 4k video and all the killer specs all the headlines so I went and bought it sold all my Canon gear sold all my lenses and I moved into the Sony realm Absolutely hated it. Honestly, it was shocking. Like, I... coming from a DSLR where you have the build quality, like, it's solid. And they say a 6500, don't get me started on the image stabilization. 
shocking. Rolling shutter, shocking. The screen on the back, like the LCD screen, unusable. It didn't even matter if it was overcast, if you were in dark, it was shocking. You just couldn't see anything. So I could never tell if anything was in focus, if anything was exposed properly. Oh yeah, and the battery life. I was popping batteries more than kids pop balloons at wedding ceremonies. And then the a7 III was announced and blimey, did that make some headlines. Like I think that changed the mirrorless world for good. Like that was the pinnacle. That was when people were like, yes, the mirrorless system has legs. So naturally, sold all my gear and <laughs> bought the a7 III. I, mean, I seriously got a problem. So yes, got the a7 III, nothing like I've experienced before. Much better than my 7D, much better than the a6500. It was great. And my first full frame. Oh, you have no idea what it's like to put a 16 to 35 lens on a full frame body and get 16 to 35. So I had the a7 III for some time, but I had the same niggles that I had with the A6500, like the poor screen quality, the viewfinder wasn't that great. The build quality, I just don't really like the way that Sony's are built. I just think that they take shortcuts is what I think. I think with the bodies anyway, the lenses are different. I think the lenses are a lot better, but the bodies, they're just, they're reusing screens all the time. So you get a nice new camera and you think, oh, it's going to have an upgraded screen. Oh no, we're going to give you the same 1.3 million dot, the or 970 k dot screen resolution from the last generation again i was starting to look elsewhere <laughs> so lumix believe it or not they introduced their s line of cameras their full frame mirrorless cameras obviously they've been doing micro four thirds for years i even thought about going to a gh5 or a g9 at the time but their autofocus was apparently terrible and i didn't really want to go back down to a smaller sensor i wanted to stick with that full frame so when they introduced these cameras i was like oh yeah this is the camera for me. Autofocus. I mean, people were saying it was okay. Can it really be that bad? I don't know. Let's sell all my gear and find out, shall we? Idiot. That's what I did. Sold all my Sony gear, bought the S1 with a 24 to 105, and wow. Honestly, the image quality was phenomenal. Like I was finally getting video to the quality, to the standard that I was wanting it to be. The colors were amazing. The highlight roll off the shadows, everything about it was just so nice and so crisp. And the build quality of the cameras, like for some reason, Panasonic just know how to set out their buttons like they've just got buttons for everything like you've got a dedicated manual focus continuous focus single focus button switch a dial here that's specific for like burst shooting or time lapse the inbuilt time lapse in these cameras is absolutely phenomenal like it's a built-in intervalometer and you can create 4k video directly in camera so not only does it take all the raw files for you but it converts them to a 4k video for you which is just brilliant i love this camera however it comes back to autofocus, doesn't it? Uh. Man, it's warm. Yeah, autofocus on the Lumix systems is just, well, it was anyway, it was just appalling. Like you'd put it on your face and you try and vlog because obviously I was trying to vlog now, yeah, as you usually, as, you, as every YouTuber does, you're trying to vlog and it just wouldn't focus on my face. Like it would just either get me and then just fire off to some sort of iguana in the background or whatever's there. Uh, what are you doing? Like, focus on me, man. I'm the star of the show. Focus on me. Again, I, 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 I was looking to move on, but Lumix weren't going to offer me the camera I wanted. I was reluctant to go back to Sony because I just sold everything. But Canon, who I grew up with, who I started out with, who I absolutely loved, they don't scrimp when it comes to certain aspects of their cameras. They definitely don't reuse things over and over again like Sony do. So yeah, Canon, they introduced the EOS R at that time. Coincidentally, it was at the same time I was deciding to swap, but Cripple Hammer. I mean, we've all watched conspiracies, camera conspiracies. We know what the Cripple Hammer is. And it was like £3,000 or something ridiculous. I'm not spending three grand on a camera that's that crippled when other manufacturers are offering something far better for a lot less. When I say far better, I mean, the specs are far better as in that day, which is the wrong direct. Don't listen to what I'm saying. Don't do what I do. Don't chase the specs. This is the lesson you have to learn from this video. So anyway, yes, I, I wanted it. Like I did, even though it was crippled, I was like, it's Canon, it's Canon, it's gonna be great. Like I love Canon. And I would go into shops and I'd feel it. I would have a go and I would be like, oh my God, it feels so nice. Like it's so well built, it's solid, it's smooth. I don't know about something about it. It just felt great and not like the Sony's. I just couldn't afford it so 
and never bought one. And then this happened, right? Peter McKinnon dropped like the beast of all sort of teaser videos when the when the R5 was released and the R6. They were the cameras that I was waiting for. That was the opportunity to move on. But again, bloody cripple hammer. R5 and R6 both overheated, but Sony, I was waiting for the A7 IV because I thought, well, this is going to be the game changer. Like they're going to upgrade the A7 III. And it was sort of rumored that it would come out, but it never did. So what did come out? The A7 S3. Yeah, although I couldn't afford it, I bought it. So I sold all my Lumix gear and I invested back into Sony, knowing that I didn't really fully enjoy my experience beforehand. But I trusted these YouTubers, honestly. Like they were definitely saying that it was phenomenal and, you know, it was brilliant. And the 10-bit footage, the s tone, a flippy screen, which was a desirable asset. I was sold. I bought it. I got it. And I loved it. And I still love it. There's nothing wrong with this camera at all. I do really like it and I would definitely recommend it. Couple of things, 12 megapixels. Yeah, you don't need anything more than 12 megapixels really for social media and stuff like that. It's, it's more than enough. However, I did find completely stopped taking photos. So before it was 50-50, I'd film, I'd take photos, I'd enjoy both experiences. After this, I just didn't want to take photos. I was like, well, there's just no point in me taking a photo. It's 12 megapixels. I'm not going to use this. I'm not going to try and sell it on um, Adobe stock. I'm not going to try and print it and put it on the wall. I'm not really going to bother. I'll just use my phone or I'll take the odd photo maybe for a thumbnail. That was it. So I sort of fell out of love with photography. Didn't enjoy it as much because of this camera. But video, loved it. Started making more and more videos. But yeah, the photo thing started to bug me. And the quality as well. Right, they did improve the screen slightly to 1.3 million dots or something like that. But I still didn't like the build quality. Like I wasn't loving the Sony build quality. Like the flippy screen, it feels too delicate. Like I'm going to break it. And yeah, I just wasn't wasn't loving it at all. So I thought it's time to move on again, you know, because um, that's what I do. That's what I do best. Now, do I go to Canon? Because now R6 Mark II is out, which is very similar to this, but it's a Canon. It's going to be well built. It's going to have a decent screen that I can at least see things on properly. Autofocus is apparently on point. Oh yeah, the autofocus of this camera as well. Phenomenal. You don't have to worry about it. You just sit here. It's on my eye. I can see it. But it wasn't enough to keep me engaged. I just think the soul of a Sony, like the interaction that you get with a Sony is, I don't know, kind of mundane, boring. It's, it's more like a tool. And I know that you, these are tools, but I want to enjoy the experience of filming and taking photos and i just don't get that with sony like i don't enjoy the experience i find it very mechanical very robotic very like clinical there's no soul that's probably the best word explanation whereas when i had the s1 i was sort of i was involved in the camera i really enjoyed using it it was very tactile it felt good in the hands the instant feedback i guess that you get from using a camera was there there was something about it it just felt better but the autofocus was awful so I was thinking, right, I'm gonna go to Canon. I need to get rid of the Sony and I want to go to Canon. Canon, I've always wanted Canon, let's just do it. So briefly, and I'm talking very briefly, I bought the R6 Mark II and I got it with the 24 to 70 f2.8 lens. Like I said, I mean, I, I went all out, right? Got the gear I wanted because I thought this is it. This is the final, this is the final hurdle. There is no going back, Sam. You are staying in the Canon realm forever. You're not gonna be jumping again, not. Not on my watch. Don't have a watch. There lies the problem. So I got the R6 Mark II and um, I was not loving that camera. The grass is not greener. Sea lock couldn't get my head around it. So much noise. And then there were the preamps for the audio. So much hiss, so much background noise. Like it was awful. I was using the exact same uh, microphone setup that I've always been using and I've never had such bad audio in my life. Hello everybody, welcome back. Right, so what we've been doing that we haven't recorded so far is that Carl has been doing some painting. So I took it back within the time frame. You know, I think 14 days or 28 days, you can take it back without any questions. And I sat and waited. So I was using the Sony A7S III for a while because I knew that the S5 II had just been announced and the S5 IIx was coming out in a few months few months later so obviously that was earlier on this year in 2023 about january february so i pre-ordered it the s5 2x and i hate it i'm just kidding i'm just kidding honestly i'm sticking with it i'm sticking with it this time because i absolutely love it i got quite a few lenses with it so i've got the 50 mil f1.8 came with the kit lens which is the 20 to 60 pretty good i think it's a decent kit lens 
85 f1.8 beautiful lens honestly like it's very affordable and the image quality is fantastic and then as you saw on the body itself got the 24 to 105 f4 which is the lens that i used to have on the s1 anyway um, and it's not the same one this is a different one obviously because i sold it off but this is the same you know what i mean so yeah this is my camera now i am not changing i swear honestly if i do change if you see a video of me saying i've switched to canon sony or om system it's the only one left i think uh feel free to give me so much abuse in the comments like as much as you want i condone it come around to my house throw stones <sighs> whatever honestly i'm not doing it again this is it i might switch see what this looks like yeah let's switch three two one what do we think is it better it better be better if you Write in the comments so it's not better and the A7S III was better. So honestly, I'm going to find you. I think it's better. Autofocus though, it's got me on the box. I can see it. Ah, you can see me. It's reliable. Oh, brush the, brush the microphone. If I do that, does it, does it do the hand? Wow. Wow. Definitely, definitely worth the years of struggling. Upgrading, downgrading. Buying, selling, losing money, definitely worth it. So I'm not sure if that even answered the question why I switched. It all boils down to the interaction you get with the camera. What I mean is if you don't enjoy using the camera or the system and you don't get that feedback, then it's probably going to hinder your progress and your creativity, in my opinion anyway. Because the S1 for me was so enjoyable to use. So I wanted to use it more, I experimented more, I tried more. The Sony A7S III, I didn't. It was too clinical and I just used it professionally and that was it. Now that I've got this S52X, I'm hoping, and I'm pretty sure it will do, reintroduce the passion and the enjoyment that I had before. That's essentially why. I think people get bogged down in the specs and trust me, I've been bogged down looking into all the specs because you could argue that that is the, why, that is the reason why I kept switching. But yeah, I think get past the specs as long as it does what you need it to do i'd much rather have the user experience and enjoy myself yeah that's the takeaway anyway speaking of takeaways i could do with the chinese so yeah if you can take away two things from this video number one is do not switch irresponsibly really think about it don't do it all the time like i do you will lose money and your wife if she finds out that's very sexist sorry i apologize but if your other half finds out you're going to be in trouble Mine doesn't know yet. Let's hope she doesn't watch this video. Number two is enjoy the process. Yeah, is that right? The most important thing is to get enjoyment out of whatever tool, equipment you are using. Man, I blabber on. So from now on, all my future videos will be filmed on the Lumix S52X. If you want to see that, please consider subscribing. Give this video a thumbs up, hit the bell, all those nice things. And I shall see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. What's that, the A75? Oh no. Kidding. <laughs>